what's up in this video i'll show you how to make these stunning boxes that has been taking over the internet recently but enough talking let's just get right into the video so now we're in the venture solved the first thing you're going to do is just drag on a fusion composition everyone should be able to follow along with this tutorial uh, even in the free version so let's just get uh, into the fusion page so now we're in the fusion page first thing i'm going to do is just change the resolution to vertical resolution because i would use this for a reel you can also do it in horizontal resolution on, or whatever you desire but the first thing you're going to do is just drag on that background and connect it to the media out and just turn the alpha all the way down to make the background transparent the first thing we're going to do is just make the box and for that we're going to use a background here and connect it and just add a rectangle to the background so we can customize the size of the box both the, the height and the width if you desire i'm just going to leave it at the normal values and if we click on f2 on the box we can rename it and i'm going to call it foreground box awesome so go back to the background and uh, change the type to gradient first things first let's make it a uh, radial so you get like this circle in the middle that is the most dark part what we're going to do now is just change this uh, black color to a light shade of purple so something like this and then go to the white here and change it to a darker shade of purple and the next thing i'm going to do is just uh, round off the corners a little bit by going on the rectangle here and just turn the corner radius up a notch something like this now i will create a background behind this one and that will act like as a outline where we can create the glow that goes around you can see on the graphic i pulled up on the screen so let's just copy this real quick and add it here by holding shift and letting go of the mouse button like this and now we are going to play with some expressions this will be pretty simple just go back to this one and just uh, click on the pin here so when we are on this one we can see the, uh, the other one and let's just rename this to background box and the reason i'm not naming it uh, outline it's because we will create a other outline later if we go to the background box here we can right click on the width and then we can click on expression and then just drag this plus down to the other width from the foreground box like this and now we can type plus zero point zero one and this will make it a little bit wider and if we tr change any values in this the other one will uh, follow along so that's why we use uh, expression that makes it easier if we're going to use this as a preset in the future if we go down to the height and and we will basically do the same thing for the height choose expression and just take this one and go down to the height like this and plus zero point zero one and if i change this one to a black i'll change this to uh if i just change this to a solid color you can probably see this one is a little bit bigger than the other one here so the reason why this happens is because we are in a 9 by 16 resolution right now so therefore we will go into the other background here then we will 0 0.01 times 9 divided by 16 because we are in a 9 by 16 uh, resolution so as you can see now it uh, looks perfect and that's why we do that so let's just change this change this one back to the gradient we used earlier if we go back here and now we are just going to create a outline uh, around it and just copy these and add it uh, by holding shift and letting go of the mouse button like this uh, this one we are just gonna choose um, we can do a linear like this and go up like this and down like this and then just choose a very light uh, purplish uh, pinkish color and go up here and choose uh, maybe a white and for the this one we're just gonna do like this so if we go into this we will just rename it to outline instead of background by clicking f2 of course and then we will uh, check off this where it says solid and then we're going to turn up the border width a little bit just uh, a little bit it's pretty hard to tell um but i think if we do something like 0 0.04 it would be great yeah i think this is looking pretty good so now we can get into the more fun part where we will begin to create the glowing effect around the outline so the first thing we're going to do is just add a color corrector to the background here and then we will add a glow as well like this and then we will add a rectangle to the color corrector's mask input and then we will add the rectangle to the glow's mask input as well you can just unpin this one now like this uh, we don't need that one anymore so now we can just turn down the width and the height so it becomes like a square something like this and then we will just drag it up to the left corner so this is in the middle uh, and now we can just turn up the saturation uh to two and the gain turn it up a whole lot like this and the glow we will turn up the glow size a lot like this and the glow as well and go into the rectangle again and now just turn up the soft edge on the rectangle here and just find the perfect panels where you can still see the glow but it's not too too harsh um, so 
So I think this is looking pretty good. And we can go into the foreground rectangle as well and turn off the soft edge just a notch. So it uh, goes a little bit into this, something like this. And if we jack these ones up a little bit, we can copy these two notes and just paste them. Uh, and then we're basically going to do the same thing for those. We're just going to drag the rectangle into the mask like this so we get a glow on uh, on this outline here and now we'll just go in here and i will turn the gain down a little bit i think it's a little bit too harsh so this is looking pretty good we can go back into the color corrector and i would like this to be more of a pinkish color so i will just drag this one down to pink something like this i think this is looking awesome so now this is the basics of it so now we can actually begin animating the path and the way we can do that is just click on just keyframe it at frame zero and just go to frame 100 and then move it down to the other corner here like this and then go 100 frames ahead again click on this one up here and then connect it to this one so if we go back to frame 100 just drag this one down like this and go over to this one and just click on control and take this one so you don't uh, affect both of them if you hold control you want to affect both just drag it over a little bit and this one down so yeah this is uh, looking pretty good now we're just going to do the same thing for the other one like this so i think this is looking pretty good let's take a look at it so yeah as you can see when we get to frame uh, 200 it stops moving around so if we go into the spline and click on zoom to fit we can see the uh, rectangle uh, path here so if you click on zoom to fit and mark uh, all the keyframes like this and right click then you can actually uh, click on set loop and set a loop so it just moves over and over again um, and that's an uh, awesome feature you can do that so yeah uh, this is pretty much it but we can still make it look better we can for example add a little bit of a, a inner shadow so just take a another background take a polygon node like this and connect to the mask output and create a merge and what you will do now is just make this color a light gray on the background and go back to the polygon just rename it in a shadow like this and then you can just begin pinning out where it will be so i'll just pin it just so we get a, a subtle inner shadow so yeah, as you can see now, we got the inner shadow, but it doesn't connect uh, to this thing here. So I'll just copy this rectangle here and connect it to the merge so everything stays in. So yeah, this is looking pretty good. And what you can do now is just go into this one and turn down the blend a little bit so it isn't that obvious. And go back to the inner shadow and turn up the soft edge. I think this uh, creates a great look for it. So it becomes a little bit more three-dimensional. So yeah, this is pretty much the effect. Uh, thank you so much for watching guys.